Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, it is time for the monthly Instagram Q&A. That is, for you guys that follow me on Instagram at Federico Talks Watches, you see me pop the Q&A picture into your feed, you ask your questions, and I try and answer a few of them. Usually, once or twice a month. But of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing the Rolex Hulk. Loving this bad boy, what can I say? And also, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com, bunch of new watches in stock. Speedy Pro, uh, a Rolex Pepsi Bezel GMT, a Zin U1, amongst others. At DelrayWatch.com, a link in the description below. So yeah, guys, let's get right into it. Everything from Rolex to Patek to vintage to business questions. We're going to start off with Nikki Dadoff 4. And if you see me staring down, I'm just reading your questions. Nikki says, great content. What are some watches to avoid due to falling prices? Now, Nikki, I don't blame you for asking that question uh, because, of course, who wants to lose money? Nobody. However, that's just <laughs> not the best way to collect watches. I always say buy what you like first and buy it reasonably. Take a brand like Gerard Perigo. Uh, doesn't hold a ton of value. Breitling also doesn't hold a ton of value. If you buy them at the right price, theoretically, you shouldn't lose a bunch. Uh, the key here is not what brands or watches to avoid so you don't lose money. It's what price should you pay for those watches. The key is not in the watches, but in the price. Buy them correctly, and theoretically, you'll never lose on any watch. Dan.egg, do you like cucumber sandwiches? Um, yeah, I, I do, but only if you cut off the crusts. That's the only way to have them. Joe underscore so underscore off. Which watch would you like to see a reissue of that hasn't already been reissued? This one was one of the easiest questions for me to answer. That is the Rolex Triple Calendar moon phase boy was this watch a beauty and actually when rolex re-announced the cellini a couple years back um and they did come out with the moon phase i thought they may reissue this and while the new cellini moon phase is a handsome watch it's got nothing on this old school one why can't rolex just remake this i will i'll tell you right now it'll be one of the best sellers which has never happened for a cellini It'll have Rolex selling a ton of watches in a different category. I'd love to see that reissued. Damien Ross says, Hey, Fed, in what case would you choose a pre-owned watch over new and vice versa for your own personal collection? Well, guys, obviously, I'm a little biased. I'm a pre-owned watch dealer, but hear me out here. Pre-owned, I would pick pre-owned 99% of the time. The only time to pick brand new uh, is A, if it's like a sports Rolex and you're getting it at retail, or B, if you don't have the option to buy it pre-owned, either because the condition sucks or the price sucks. But I always buy pre-owned. Why would you want to take that depreciation? As long as it meets your condition, you have a decent watchmaker who you trust to check it over for you, why not save a ton of money? Uh, buying new is almost never an option for me. Never, ever. Unless it's a watch that I really want that I can only buy new. But that is very rarely the case. Um, now, I'm not saying this is right for everybody. You may be new to the watch market. Um, you know, you may not know exactly what you're doing. You're not too experienced. In which case, there's no harm in buying new. But for me personally, new, wasting that money, not a chance. Pierce underscore arrow says... What's your post-long day at work cocktail or spirit of choice? Well, uh, I have three. If I'm really lazy, I'll just go with a scotch, like a nice Laphroaig. Not neat. I put it on, on the rocks. Sue me. Love it. Uh, if not, gin tonic is fantastic. Hendrix, Hendrix or Empress gin. Love it with one of those Indian tonics, a little squeeze you know, squeeze of lemon or lime. 
But in summer, and Miami is eternal summer, I will go with a Negroni or an Aperol Spritz. Problem is, I mean, the Aperol Spritz is easy to make at home, but the Negroni, uh, it takes a little bit of effort. So if I'm out and about, I'll probably get a Negroni, but if I'm at home, either a Scotch, gin and tonic, or an Aperol Spritz. And you can never hate on champagne. I, I kind of like it all, pretty much. <laughs> Caravaggio001, who, besides Rolex, makes the best bracelets in the business. Easy, Omega. Uh, the Omega Seamaster bracelet is a thing of beauty. Fantastic. Uh, Tudor makes a great bracelet in their Pelagos. That buckle is fantastic. Um, and the new Cartier bracelet with the easy link and the resizable without tools, also great. So I'd say Omega for comfort, Tudor for the buckle, and uh, Cartier for ingenuity. Watch Talk Studio. Do you think Grand Seiko is hurting their lineup by incorporating Spring Drive and Zeratsu polishing in their lower end Seiko lineup? Absolutely, it's hurting them. Um, now, yeah, I'm going to get called the watch knob here. But the only way, uh, you know, one of the ways, one of the things that made Grand Seiko special was Spring Drive and Zeratsu polishing and making those things price prohibitive and putting them only in Grand Seiko gave a reason uh, for people to buy Grand Seiko. Uh, putting it in their normal Seiko lineup, uh, yeah, it hurts Grand Seiko, but at the same time, they sell a ton more Seiko because people see it as a value proposition. Uh, you know, what's better for, for their balance sheet? I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe they are selling more normal Seiko because of their Zeratsu polishing and the spring drive, but in my opinion, it absolutely does hurt Grand Seiko to share their technology and techniques with a lower uh, end line. I mean, how could it not? Mickles says, should you store a watch with the crown pulled out if not wearing it for a while? A lot of people say this about quartz watches uh, to kind of uh, stop the battery from draining. And, and I guess in a mechanical watch to hack the movement, but the power reserve would drain out anyway. I say no. Um, it's just... It's a danger zone thing. I mean, you can let moisture into the watch by leaving it open, uh, moisture and dust. Now, yes, many watches have an O-ring and a gasket that'll stop that anyway at kind of the normal atmospheric pressure, but why risk it? There's absolutely no reason to store a watch with the crown pulled out uh, unless you're really worried about batteries. But honestly, no, I, I just think it's safer overall to have the crown uh, screwed in or just put in. Kyle.Baker18, can I be an intern? Love all the work you guys do. Honestly, just want to be a part of the watch industry. I'll work for free. Kyle, thank you uh, so much for the very generous offer. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, listen, the watch industry is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we're not taking more people on. We actually just hired a couple of people. Our team is as big as it's ever been. Uh, but, you know, if you're ever in Miami, either for college or, you know, finishing up high school, shoot me an email. You never know. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say no, but, uh, but yeah, if you're local, we'll figure something out. <laughs> New York watch fan. Were there any tax benefits in starting your business in Florida? Uh, not particularly for my business, but on a personal level, there's no state income tax, which is pretty amazing. More money saved uh, to buy watches, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, not, you know, uh, it just I happened to be in Florida when I started the business. It hasn't wasn't really thought out for any particular benefits. Jimmels2714, what are your thoughts on Alpina in general as a brand? Alpina, owned by Frederic Constant, who is now owned by Citizen, is highly underrated. Full disclosure, I do have a few Alpinas on my website, DelrayWatch.com. But the quality is there. It's, it's a very high quality watch. Uh, a lot of, uh, a few in-house movements, some Salita movements. Most of the time, these can be picked up for under $1,000. I mean, what can I say? You know, especially for the in-house stuff, that's absolutely a deal and a half. I think they're a value prop, and if you don't know Alpina and you're shopping around that price point, 
you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't look it up. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.